on Film Junkie Live. We got some little DCU updates, nothing much. You know, James Gunn just te teasing that dead man again, and the DC official saying something, and I don't know. There's not much, but hey, we're going to talk about some stuff. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetle. No trailer yet, but we have a first look, and we have what Michael Keaton looks like in the sequel. Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. The reviews are in and box office projections in. Well, you know, <laughs> I could just hope. Trailers, trailers, trailers. There's been a ton of trailers that seem to have come out in the past couple of days. So let's uh, talk about those and so much more tonight on Film Junkie Live. I said yesterday, I said it. And I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it right now, that if that Beetlejuice trailer shows up today, I will react to it butt-ass naked. I'll do it live, butt-ass naked. It's, it's, it's not out there, is it? I'll strip now. This lights out. Now you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. <laughs> Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Film Junkie Live on your Wednesday hump day. Let's get to humping. All right. Sorry, I'm a little late. Yes, I was trying to figure out a little, a little thing that I was complaining about on Monday when it came to how the whole Twitter thing and, you know, doing the multi-stream thing and how the title was all off. I was like, oh, figured it out last minute. So anyways, guys, appreciate you uh, spending some time with me. Good to see you. Of course, uh, subscribe to the channel, like the freaking stream, share it, do all that, follow me on all the sock meds, support the Patreon, support the, well, if you want to be part of the Film Junkie family, become a member, you know, we'll talk after this, members only stream, that happens every Wednesday, so hopefully you guys are doing good, who's out there, huh? How we doing? All right, we got Game City Savior right here. Did I watch X-Men? I have not watched X-Men yet. My, that might be something I do on the weekend for sure. There's, a, what, three episodes out there? But I've seen all the uh, the great reactions that, that have been happening, so that's good. Teledia plays. What's going on? We got Shane Baker right here. New Alien trailer looking good. Yeah, we're going to be talking about some trailers today. Seems like a lot of trailers showing up this week, but we're still waiting for that one specific one, uh, you know, with that Beetle guy. You know? Mr. Nobody, happy hump day. I saw your post. Ooh, we got some uh, gifting that's going on right here. Oh, Miss Lisa Jackson, you're such a doll. Um, and we got a new subscriber there too as well. Jeez, everything's just going crazy. Oh, no, no, that's a new member. What am I talking about? I thought it said subscriber. Can't even read the whole thing. Keep going. There you go. Love it. Love it, guys. Love it. Keep on going. But uh, I saw your post about Alien Film looks uh, good. I have uh, never heard of the director before, but I trust really Scott. I kind of like and when new directors start popping out. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that. Uh, Mr. Fede Alv Alvarez. I mean, he did the, the Evil Dead remake. He did the Evil Dead remake. And uh, I thought it was actually really great. The, the fact that, like, Evil Dead franchise is, like, one of my favorite franchises. I thought he actually did uh, a pretty good job with that. So, yeah, now. So I'm good. Ahoy, ahoy, Mr. McKenzie. And, yes, guys, it is Wine Wednesday. So, Cheers. Cheers to you, Mr. McKen M M McKenzie. Cheers to you. I hope Michael Fassbender. I don't know if they're actually going to go that way. Really they might not. I don't know. But, uh, of course, we got uh, Miss Lisa Jackson right here. You're, thank you for so much for, of course, uh, providing some memberships for people. I really love that. Really love that. Cheers to you. Been seeing a lot of... Yeah, we'll talk about that. Eh. It happens. It happens. We got Eric Patterson right here as well. And then welcome new members. Like I said, Miss Lisa Jackson. Gifting five people right there. So hopefully you guys show up. Show up uh, after this and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll get a little bit more intimate. You know, not like what I said at the beginning when I said I would react to the trailer butt naked. No, that's that's a whole other thing. Anyways, Antonio Baker. What is happening? Good to see you. All right, we got Shano right here. Greetings, y'all. Guess what day it is. Guess what 
It is its hump day. That's right. It definitely is that day. So there we go. All right. Let's go ahead and turn that off and turn that off too. But uh, yeah, guys, hopefully you guys had a good, pretty good Wednesday. Um, you know, I'm moving a little slow today. I, I, my sleep has been off the past couple of nights. I don't know what, what's going on. My brain's just like, hey, time to wake up. And it's like, no, it's not time to wake up. But here you are waking me up. So I've been kind of just like, ugh. So feeling a little sluggish today, but it's okay. Got my wine, got everything. What's going on, RJ? See you out there. Good to see you. But yeah, we're going to talk about, you know, the little bit of teases that are happening when it comes to the DCU. Not really much happening there. And then, of course, well, hey, guess what? We didn't get, we haven't gotten the trailer yet for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. But we finally got some images when it, when it comes to Beetlejuice. So at least there's that. And then, of course, we've got Ghostbusters Frozen Empire coming out this week. So we'll read some of the reviews. We've got some box office projections. I'm going to go see it tomorrow with Mama Film Junkie. We're going to go see it because she wanted to see it, too. And then, of course, we'll talk about some of the trailers that have come out that, uh, you know, have been okay, not bad and, you know, awesome as well. So we'll do all that. So let's uh, let's uh, let's get to the tweets. All right. Let's turn that off right there. All right. Let's get to some tweeting. All right. So we'll, we'll start off, I guess, with this. We'll start off with. okay. We'll start off with this because, I mean. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I love it. I love it, but it's just... I, again, I, I, I just kind of wonder... Hold on. Let's see. Let me... I'm trying to find where it all kind of started, but sometimes he deletes things. I don't know. Okay, so... There we go. Keep going. Where is it at? Did he delete that one? I'm talking about David Ayer here. And I was going down... Yeah, I think he deleted. He, he he does this too much, man. He does it too much. Ugh. Yeah, he deleted it. See, he he tends to do that. He tends to do that. But yes, David Ayer was like he tweeted out an image. He tweeted out an image of Harley and Joker, and maybe somebody probably pulled it. I I didn't pull the the image, but he's been uh. Doing that, you know, he did that again. He tweeted something out and he talked about how, like, he wanted everybody to see too bad ever nobody saw Jared Leto's full performance because if any character that that suffered the fate of the studio and the studio squad cut, it was uh, apparently Jared Leto's Joker because every time David Ayer kind of talks about it, he talks about how Jared Leto was cut to pieces. Even Jared Leto uh, talks about that too, but yeah. He uh, he tweeted out something and then, of course, deleted it. And again, I kind of wonder if he's just like, you know, you know, he feels a little frisky at night, maybe pours himself a a whiskey and just goes, fuck it. I'm going to say some shit. And then maybe his representatives just go like, delete that, delete that. But he has said some stuff right here. So obviously responding to that deleted tweet. You know, people saying, shut up, you idiot. I believe you meant shut up. <laughs> yeah, well, somebody said shit up. Uh, and then it said, did you edit the picture to get rid of uh, damaged? Because, you know, they, everybody always talks about the damaged tattoo. He even says right here and specifically talking about the damaged tattoo because that image was, you know, the, it was a test it was a test image that he posted. He said, not edited. We tested various tattoo looks. The word damaged was a dig at Batman for smashing his teeth. Oh, man, I wonder if the, if there was ever a plan to show that, you know, where Batman is just beating the absolute shit out of the Joker and just like the teeth and, oh, man, the teeth popping out and stuff like that. So, and then somebody says, yes, meant, uh, I meant, sh- <laughs> which is what your Suicide Squad movie is. Oh, man, this person, yeah, I don't know why he's responding to this. Like, I didn't have control over the edit on squad trust me i'm unhappier about it than you glad you enjoyed beekeeper have you seen end of watch or fury i'm proud of those cheers mate yeah showing a little sass there david ayer which is good you know because end of watch and fury are very good movies and beekeeper is a great movie too i enjoyed the absolute shit out of that so and i think that was pretty much it when it came to that well no he's still saying that Definitely coping. And then somebody said the DC DCEU universe was just cursed from the beginning. Best thing to do is wipe it off clean and start fresh. And he puts those buggy eyes kind of thing. So, and then he says he wants to do a Cold War movie. 
next and then somebody said let just let it go all that stuff so just david ayer just having some fun but yeah he deleted that it was it was it was uh you know it was leto and and it was margot robbie and there it was a test it was like a test image that they did so he didn't have the damage tattoo so but you know i think that's the thing as a filmmaker suicide squad's always gonna haunt haunt david ayer which it should i i could totally understand that because he set out to make a certain movie and the studio put out a different movie now how different it is that's what's going to be interesting but it, it but again i just think we missed the opportunity when it came to Releasing the air cut, man, if it could have been a joint thing, Zach and David just kind of just coming together, you know, when the pitch was happening, it was like, you have the Snyder cut, you have the air cut, just have them both just kind of just, you know, just, just come out at the same time because the air cut needs about six, seven million dollars. Not that much, not as much as, you know, the Snyder Cut needed, for sure. It needed just like a little fraction of it, so I don't know. If it'll ever happen, who knows? It'll probably be like a Donner situation, but hey, I love it when David Ayer gets sassy. And yes, hey, welcome everybody. Welcome to, uh, you know, welcome to um, the members only. Yeah, Lisa, you're just being awesome right now. Just handing out the gifts right here. So, you know, we got uh, Mario. We got My Nerdy Home. We got, um, who else is there? Sorry, my thing, my, my screen's a little messed up. Casual Barbarian, Jimmy Jumper, and then the Black Mama Studios. Welcome, you know, for being a, a member on the channel. Like I said, members only stream right after this. But yeah, David Ayer still pushing for that, as he should. One of these days, we'll see it. And then, of course, we have, I mean, this is a cool freaking poster right here. Ghostbusters, yep. That's a cool poster. Not too bad when it comes to the 40X. When it comes to the 40X. Hey, who's looking forward to this? <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, there was a Robin Williams movie that came out a long time ago that uh, did not do well at the box office, did not trans. Yeah, I don't I, I would not say that it did not translate well, but it just I don't know. Maybe it just Popeye does not belong in live action because it's like, how do you make it work? I don't know. But apparently, yes, according to Variety, there is going to be a Popeye movie in the works. I, I I just don't know if that character actually works in live action. I don't. It just doesn't feel like it. They tried, and Robin Williams was the perfect actor to do because he could do the voice, he could do the face, and what was it Shelley Duvall, right? Who was Olive? Uh, and it, it seemed like the pieces were there, but I don't know. I haven't watched that movie since I was a kid. That live action movie, I should probably revisit it again just to see how ridiculous it actually was. But then again, Popeye is a ridiculous character. I think, I mean, the, the whole point of the character was, I would say, just to get kids to eat spinach. Okay? Yeah, spinach is good for you, but you know, it doesn't taste good, but it's good for you. It's got a lot of nutrients and vitamins in it, you know? So, yeah. I don't know. We'll see what happens with this, but a live-action Popeye. Who's going to play live-action Popeye? Chris Pratt? <laughs> no. That's not... No. no. Uh, and then, of course, we have this right here. When it comes to... Uh, we already know about this, uh, that Ryan Coogler's next film releases on March 7th, 2025. And, of course, it's going to be starring Michael B. Jordan, and it's described as a 1930s-era vampire movie. So... And Michael B. Jordan is going to be twins. That's right. So there's going to be two Michael B. Jordans. So that's pretty sweet right there. Looking forward to that for sure. And this is pretty sweet right here. The Snyder family is growing when it comes to making their stamp in the, uh, well, into, into the entertainment business. Because Eli, his son, of course, who's done, you know, second AD, who's been in his movies. Eli Snyder to direct pilot episode of TV series until the last one produced by Zack Snyder and Debbie Snyder. The series will follow a British deserter from the infamous French Foreign Legion who is found 20 years after fleeing the harsh reality of his mercenary service and forced back with the new recruits in the thick of danger. 
See, that sounds awesome. That sounds great. And 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 before everybody starts saying Nepo baby, Nepo baby, can we stop with that? I always get when I hear that whole Nepo baby stuff. It's like shut the fuck. I mean, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Okay. Sometimes you know people get successful. They have kids, and those kids want to follow into you know their mom or dad's way, their pathway, and do something. And yeah, of course, being who they are, Zach and Debbie can actually open up doors for Eli to do something like that. But that doesn't mean that Eli is not a talented filmmaker. And I guess we'll actually full on fricking see that. So yeah, I don't know. It's all just dumb. When people say Nepo baby stuff, I hate that. Sometimes maybe, sometimes maybe I almost went into a, a Christopher Walken impression right there. Sometimes maybe there's Nepo babies. Come on. And what's going on there, uh, Jose? Good to see you. Happy hump day. Let's go. Let's go. Your boy Otani, man, got getting screwed over by his, what, his interpreter? That's pretty crazy. Saw that news. Uh, No Beetlejuice trailer yet? Uh, All right. Still waiting on it. Still waiting on it. What else we got here? Oh, we got this. Oh, okay. Well, I could still read it right here. People in them deleted... People in their deleted tweets. They're deleted tweets because apparently somebody posted that, yes, they watched the Penguin trailer. That's right. This right here. It's deleted, but I could still see it because I quote tweeted it. But if I click it, it goes away. But it said, just finished watching the new trailer. Looking forward to finally being allowed to talk about what this damn show is about. The Penguin. And then showed a hat right there with the logo on it. But yeah, if you click on that tweet, Sebastian O'Hara. It's like, you realize that if you tweet something, no matter what, someone's going to screenshot it. There's ways to see it. So when you delete stuff, it's like, yeesh. But anyways, but yeah, so are we are we going to finally get a, you know, a full-on trailer for the Penguin? Please, after the heartbreak that we have to wait another year for the Batman Part 2, we need some we need some Reeves Universe stuff. Please, please. Oh, you want to see some cool art? This is a cool poster right here. Look at that Dark Knight poster. Love that. From Steve Reeve Art. That's good stuff right there. That's good stuff. And so is this from Martacus, Batman Beyond. That's pretty awesome looking too. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. All right. Oh, man. All right, let's talk about this a little bit. Wonka Winker. That's right. That's what he's called. And I think even somebody during the live uh one of the live shows when i talked about the whole willy wonka experience that happened um in glasgow talked about it what a couple of few weeks ago and it was a shit show absolute shit show it was a promise of like this crazy adventure and people just got ripped off because it definitely was not that if you want to go back and watch that video i put i, I clipped it out and put it out as a film junkie shot go ahead and watch it on the channel if you want to get some more details on it but the guy who is running this thing is not a good person and trying to play victim, I guess. Billy Cole, Cole, I don't know what it, yeah, whatever you say, says the event ruined his life. I have lost my friends. I have lost the love of my life. I was made out to be the face of all evil and generally, and uh, genuinely, that's really not the case. He received hundreds and hundreds of hate messages and has been dubbed Willy Wanker. Despite claiming to only use AI for spell checking the Wonka scripts, it's been uncovered that he published 16 AI generated books last year on Amazon. That's right. A few years back, he also canceled a Santa event after collecting a bunch of money. Toy to toy donations. This motherfucker is trying to play victim and ruin my life. I lost friends. I lost the love of my life. Because you're a piece of shit. This is the world trying to tell you that you're a piece of shit. Okay? You're selling bullshit with AI. Selling bullshit to like Santa Claus 
things, donations and everything. And he sold this. You're a piece of shit. <laughs> Don't play victim. Yes, that girl should have left you. Yes, friends should leave you. Reflect. Internalize a little bit, huh? Jesus. So hopefully, maybe that'll be the last time we hear about this. Willy Wanker, I guess you could say. My God. Just absolutely terrible. And then we got this right here. The never-ending story. Yeah, that's right. We're getting, uh, we're finally getting this. I'm surprised it took this long, but a live action, of course, the never-ending story movie is in the works. Why it took this long for it? I remember watching the first two. Didn't they, did they make a third one? I don't even know. But I remember like the first one had a different kid. And then what Jonathan Brandis was uh, the kid. And I forgot even what the kid's name is in the, the, the main character. It was uh, in the second one. Um, I remember watching those. I just I'm surprised it actually took this long. Like how, how is it, I mean, how many times have they gotten pitches for, for a never ending story movie, but it's finally happening. There's some pretty cool art right there when it comes to, uh, I see without seeing darkness is as clear as day night, daylight. Who am I? Oh uh, yeah. We'll talk about that. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Oh yeah. We'll talk about that too. We got some art right here. Superman legacy. Yeah, those trunks, a little hefty, but hey, what can you do? And then, of course, we got a new House of Blood Axe. Number three is out. Zach posted it. So uh, go grab that if you haven't already. We got the poster for Alien Romulus, which looks good. And we'll talk about that trailer. We'll talk about that. And then, of course, people talking about everything and all. Hey, look at that. This is like a... Hey, it's live on Twitter and it's working pretty well. So there you go, guys. There's the tweets right there. Yeah, like I said, we'll talk about some of, some more of that stuff right there. But cheers to uh, cheers to all that. Hmm. Ah, gotta love the wine Wednesdays. I've I'm been on a wine kick late, lately, so it's been kind of fun. Been kind of fun. All right, what are we talking about in the chat here? Ah, what Elon bucks? Oh, okay, you guys just having chat? Damn those tweets. <laughs> RJ Elon Bucks. <laughs> Elon Bucks. Uh, it's because like uh we we all do we some of us do that thing where we just like uh respond to like, you know, a certain a certain tweet with a big that that has a big following, so then you know you get you get the uh the impressions. <laughs> what do they call that? Impression impression engagement farming or something like that? I don't know. Recently today, the official trailer of Live Action Herald and Purple, yeah, Purple Crown movie came out. Yeah, well, not right now, but it came out earlier today. We'll talk about it. So, is anyone watching Quiet on the Set? No, I don't know what that is. Not even sure what that is. X Men '97 is great. Yeah, I know. I have to, I have to reactivate my, uh, my Disney Plus to do that. So, gotta, gotta do that first. Because I, you know, trying to save some buckaroos, I turned that off because I felt like I didn't need it anymore. Anyways, all right, let's talk about some teases when it comes to, oh, that one, the Nickelodeon thing. That's right. I've seen clips. I've seen clips, and I know there's been some interesting responses to it. And I know, like, that Dan Schneider dude has even been interviewed, I think, by THR or Deadline or somebody like that. And, of course, trying to clear his name, even though, like, so many people have ousted that guy for being a fucking predator creep. Dude belongs in jail, and hopefully, like, some big dude named Bruno has his way with him in jail. I just say, I'm just saying, you know, because, you know, I think he, when it comes to Dan Schneider and all that, uh, the fact that it was just like, he ruined Amanda Bynes. Amanda Bynes, I had such a crush, crush on Amanda Bynes when she was coming up because, I mean, I think we're relatively the same age, but I always had a crush on Amanda Bynes, you know? She was beautiful, she was funny, she had a presence, and everything, I watched her show, watched, uh, I think she was on all that as well. And then, of course, the movies and everything like that. And now look at her. She is just a fight. It's, it's, it sucks to see how she is now. And 
her and Mr. Dan Schneider were very close. And it's just like, ugh. Oh, THR, who was it? Oh, it was a YouTube channel. Okay, I thought I saw it on... Okay, it wasn't THR. Okay, cool. Oh, I'm sure there's worse things that have happened when it comes to that, too. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch it. I'm going to have to catch it, but... It's just, yeah, it's pretty gross. Pretty damn gross. But anyways... Uh, yeah, we'll talk more about... Yeah, there's there's another little trailer, too. You can still fix a man up. <laughs> you think you could fix her? You could try. You could try. You could try to fix her. I don't know, man. She, uh, she was going to have a podcast, and now she's going to go for her license as a... I don't know, beautician or something like that, which good on her. She, I, I, she should probably stay out of the spotlight and just like do something. I don't know. I don't know. It just sucks. It sucks what happened with her. But anyways, all right. The DCU and just some little bit, little bit of teasing, a little bit of nothing. There's not much, not much, but I figured I was like, all right, let's talk about the little teasings that have been happening. And, you know, obviously James Gunn and crew are working hard right now filming Superman. And, uh, you know, as much as I'm like, okay, I want as much as possible. And I want, you know, I want that, uh, I want that, that Superman suit reveal. Sadly, we're probably not going to get it for another couple of few months. Who knows? But, uh, you know, he's still doing some teasing and it's just, it's not like he hasn't teased him before, but of course he's teasing dead man again, but this time with like no context, no caption, no nothing. He just posted it. He just posted this. work work all right you're not gonna work of course not so he posted that no caption no anything but just posting this cover right here this image right here which of course is a very awesome cool trippy dark image right here but then it kind of makes you wonder too it's like okay why is he doing that he's done that before where he's posted just an image of a DC character without any captions or anything like that. And guess what? They ended up being in like Superman legacy. I think he posted Mr. Terrific. I think he, I mean, he's posted that before. So it's just kind of wondering like, all right, what's going on here? Are we, are we, are we getting a director? Are, are you going to get, wouldn't it be freaking awesome if somehow, somehow, and it probably not going to happen. It's just a wet dream that I, that I'm having currently right now. Good thing. The camera is like from here above is what if he actually got Guillermo del Toro, like, what if he got him to come back and do the Justice League Dark movie? You know, we already got a Swamp Thing movie that's going to be happening. Maybe that would lead into the Justice League Dark. I don't know. And we just got Guillermo back. Ah, wouldn't that be something? Not going to happen. There's like, there's no way that's going to happen. But it's just the fact that he was like teasing that. It's like, all right, what are we doing here, Jimmy? What are we doing here, Jimmy? Jimmy Guns? Why you got to do this? The last time I think he posted Dead Man was he was just talking about Halloween. So it was back in October. He was just talking about Halloween. But just the fact that he just randomly posted that. It's like, what? What's happening? What's happening there? And then this probably means nothing, too. But when it came to, uh, of course, Jennifer Holland. And uh, please, Jennifer Holland, keep on posting those workout videos. Anyways, um, you know, when she posted this little tweet right here, when it came to teasing things like in a timeline that are happening this year, the DC official site handle right here goes so ready for the fire. Who knows? Might just be an intern that is just like going, OK, let, let me. But again, what the biggest thing that I'm taking away from this, from all this is we live in the age of internet, social media, and just constantly putting stuff out there, you know? And this is what I'm liking about where the DCU is, or DC Studios is. I mean, who knows if it's going to pay off? It might not. It might all fail. There's a, yeah, there's a big chance it might all fail. I don't have 100% faith in Jimmy Guns. No. I'm like probably, like, I'm, I'm, I'm like around the 50 range. I'm like... As much as I'm looking forward to what he's doing in this new Superman and new DCU, I'm like, well, there's a lot riding on this. So I'm like kind of just like right in the middle of like, all right, I'll, I'll hype it up. I'll hype it up and be excited for it. But Jesus Christ, this is going to be a task right here, Jimmy. So what I like 
though, and I've said it before, is like the fact that they're utilizing social media and the internet and just trying to keep the hype up. And that's what you got to do nowadays. You got to do that nowadays. I mean, let's face it. It's just like you just put the content out there, put all the stuff out there. And we've talked about it on like the Vodka stream. And I still think that they should do like some kind of weekly show where they just talk about comic books. They talk about the shows and they have guests. They should bring something like that back, but more likable guests. I mean, there was like that DC whatever live and yeah, the guests are not the guests, but the hosts were like not that likable. You know what I'm talking about. Um, but bring something like that back. And then James Gunn, like, you know, if he's obviously on location, he just kind of zooms in talks about updates some things you get some jim lee presence there he can even zoom in we have the they have the technology to do something like that just to keep everything going you know not just through social media but actually doing like a weekly kind of like online youtube show that would be pretty sweet and uh, hey i'm available if you want me to do that i could do that i can help do that you know just they should just do like a weekly show when it comes to that maybe they will i don't know who knows maybe one of these days they will but but you know keeping the 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 hype alive that's that's the big thing right there but you know that's just me that's just me yeah <sighs> beetlejuice 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 yeah don't say three times or if we say it three times, will the trailer show up? My God, the teasing for this trailer is like getting out of hand. It sounded like it was going to come out yesterday. Then there was somebody that said something about like, well, because the Alkali trailer, the Star Wars trailer that came out, they're like, no, nah, we're not going to do that. We'll push it to tomorrow. It is now tomorrow and still no trailer. Still no trailer, but we at least got a first look from Entertainment Weekly when it comes to the movie. But it's like, okay. I want the freaking trailer. Unless it's shown up. I don't think it's ha I don't think it has, right? Has it? Okay, I'm like, oh, 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 no, 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 we're good. You guys would have told me in the chat. I know that. But at least we got something, right? At least we got something. And there he is. There he is. That's what we wanted to see right there. Michael Keaton back as Beetlejuice in the striped suit. Hair crazy. Everything crazy. You know? I mean, it's crazy like that. That it, What? It's been, what, 30 years? Almost 30 years? 35 years? Something like that? 35 years, right? Since the original. And, Yeah. Dude still kind of looks the same. But yeah, they decided, hey, yeah, I'm going to post that right there. But that's not that's not it, though. Yeah, they also posted, uh, well, there's a full shot. I should have went for the full shot. But there's Jenna Ortega and uh, Winona Ryder. Obviously, we know that the story is uh, going to be about some kind of tragedy that happens. And then I think, like, Jenna Ortega's character ends up, like, you know, wanting to die or something like that. I don't know, but... So we got a first look, and then, of course, when it comes to going back to the basics, Tim Burton's expressed this. Michael Keaton's even talked about this, too, in recent interviews, is the fact that the, there's practical effects that are being bought, brought back, like like stop-motion animation, like what we saw in the first one. He's doing a lot of that. So Tim Burton is going to Tim Burton this shit out of Beetlejuice 2. Thank God. Yes. Please do. Stop motion animation. Why not? Bring that back. Bring it back, Timmy. I love it. I love what you have to say about that. I, he said it needed to. Uh, it needed a back to basics homemade quality. It re-energized why I love making movies. There you go. Bring it back to that stop motion. I think people will dig that. I think that's smart. I think that's absolutely smart to bring it back to that. And Michael Keaton has even expressed how beautiful it actually is. Now, yes, he is the star of the movie. And, of course, he's going to say stuff like that. I get it. But still, I just love the fact that they're going back to some of those basics right there. So just, just where's that trailer? Just where's that trailer, man? Come on. 
Where's that trailer? Like I said, I will strip down, strip down and do it naked if that thing shows up during the stream. I'm gonna, I, I'm just trying to put it out there. Not, not, not put me naked out there. No, I'm trying to put it out there. The energy, I'm trying to give some energy to freaking have them release that damn trailer, man. But we'll see. We'll see. But anyways, he looks good. They look good. I can't wait for it. Can't wait for it. Who are you going to call? Not the critics. <laughs> Sorry. I had to say that. Ah, uh, but we got Ghostbusters. Af uh, almost at Afterlife. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Afterlife was the last one. But uh, yes, we got the reviews coming in. I'm at, Like I said, I'm going to be seeing it. Look forward to my first reaction review. I'm going to be seeing it tomorrow, of course. Uh, of course, when I post like the video about this, it'll be today. So look forward to that first reaction review. Seeing a later showing. Um, so I won't, it, it, it won't be up till, you know, late, later at night or something like that. So I'm seeing a later show and just because it's easier, uh, like I said, I'm going with uh, mama film junkie. She'll be joining me. She wanted to see it. So did you just say ghost floppers? How dare you? How dare you? Who, who invited Jose? Who invited Jose? How dare you? How dare you? All right. So where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where was I looking for? Oh yeah, that. Okay. So let's, uh, let's go through some of the reviews because, you know, it's what I like to do sometimes, you know, just go through that devil fruit site. The only reason why I like the devil fruit site is the fact that you could just, you know, get a little clipping of some of these critics reviews. And, you know, I hate the fact that the tomato meter is a thing, but you know, it still is a thing, but yeah, let's read some of these reviews. And of course, currently right now it's at 47%. 100 reviews, but hey, what could he do? Ghostbusters Frozen Empire offers a certain amount of nostalgia-fueled fun for fans of the original, but a crowded cast and surprisingly serious tone prevent this sequel from truly sparking. That's interesting, because I'm like, crowded cast? I mean, I guess you got the new group and the old group. Nostalgia? Okay, there's obviously going to be some nostalgia. It feels like the, the last one should have had more nostalgia than this one. I don't know. Yeah, there's just some bad reviews right here. Ackroyd practically glows. It's enough to make you want to see the actor make Ghostbusters movies forever, so long as they're not they're better than Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. All right, interesting. Losing momentum as it goes, Frozen Empire raises the increasingly frustrating suspicion that Keenan Keenan and uh, Reitman couldn't choose which of their various story ideas to use and so decided to use them all. So yeah, everybody's seeing that it, it's just like cluttered. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire makes for a serviceable entry in this now four decade running franchise. That's considered a bad review, but it was kind of a good review. It's so confusing by its own lore, by its in, uh, incessant callbacks, to the past and by the uncertainty around how to address the present that it mostly unfolds as a seri series of loosely connected Ghostbusters themed sequences rather than an actual coherent movie. Okay, let's read some positive ones right now, okay? Despite its weaknesses, <laughs> this sequel is well above the poorly stretched bubblegum of Ghostbusters 2. Now, hey, wait a minute, I just gave... A reason why Ghostbusters 2 should be loved. Anyways. And the overdose of nostalgia of Ghostbusters Afterlife. Okay, well, that was kind of a positive review, I guess. With nostalgic warmth and a jolt of laughter, Frozen Empire saves us from the emotional hi uh, hypothermia that the other blockbusters can cause. Well, there you go. That's something, all right. I mean, it just sounds like me being a fan. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm a, I'm, I'm a biased fan. I'll be biased. I'm going to be biased. Like, am I going to like it? Probably. Okay. You could probably guarantee that I'm actually going to like this movie because I am a Ghostbusters fan. You guys know this. So I'm already just, just from what I've seen, I'm like, yes, but I will try to go in also and just look at it as how's the story structured? How are the, the characters balanced? Sure. I'm going to, of course, do all that as well, but I could just see myself just being a diehard fan. I'm going to be a little biased. That's just the way it is. Some that That's just the way it is. 
But uh, let's go ahead and look at Ghostbusters. Yeah, should have had this up already. But let's look at some of those box office projections. And... All right, so let's go ahead and open up this one right here. Variety. Variety already has some box office projections. Box office preview, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire aims for a $45 million opening. That's domestic, so not, it's not too bad. All right. Jeez, they really want me to drink some Jack Daniels, don't they? So $45 million, uh, and then, you know, Afterlife opened at 44 so that's not too bad, and eventually earned 129.3. So they're not, there's no projected numbers, I don't think, when it comes to worldwide, but... All right, 45, that's not bad. That's not too bad. We'll see. I don't even know what the budget is. Budget might be a little hefty. Who knows? But we'll see. Just seems like everybody wants a break from the superhero stuff. So we got other things here, too. And, you know, we can only hope. I'll, we'll see what the my movie theater's like when I go see it. See what it's, you know, see how full it is, I guess you could say. But, you know, again, I'm going in as, as much as I'm going to be looking at it like, you know, as how it, the the movie's structured, I'm still gonna probably walk out going, hey, I loved it, I loved it, the Ghostbuster, loved it, you know. It's it, it's difficult, you know. Sometimes, sometimes. All right. All right, let's talk about some trailers. Jesus Christ, it's been like, uh, I mean, how many trailers have come out? Just so freaking many. And, you know, something from the Star Wars world, something from even the Marvel world, uh, something from some world that, that thinks Zachary Levi st still should play a child-like character, Mad Max world, and then, of course, the alien world right here. But, yes, we kind of just kind of go through some of them right here. And... Uh, well, the, well, okay, that, that'll be the last one. There's a trailer that I actually wanted to talk about when it came to you guys. But today, what did we get today? Oh, we got the Alien Romulus trailer, which, you know, this is from, again, Fede Alvarez. About, am I saying his last name right? The Evil Dead remake guy, Don't Breathe, you know, that guy. He's got a horror background, so naturally, just having, um, just, just, just having him tr tackle this franchise right here. I mean, you could already see it right there. Like when you see like that, I mean, come on. That's uh, uh listen to the sound effects. Oh, look at that. The face huggers. What? What? Oh, oh what the hell was happening there? And I forgot that Isabella Merced's also in this. Ah, oh, face hugger. Jesus. Oh, come on. A lot of people are excited. A lot of people are excited. I mean, how do you not get excited for that? I mean, if you're a fan of the Alien franchise. And apparently, when it came to... When it came to uh, notes that Fide, like, received from Ridley Scott, because Ridley Scott is producing it. I mean, who knows? I mean, what Ridley Scott was trying to do with Prometheus and Alien... Co and then, of course, Alien Covenant just went a different direction, but still had... What he was doing with Prometheus, I was really intrigued by. But the fact that that didn't hit with audiences, so then they try to go back to, hey, Xenomorph, ah, you know, and trying to do and all that stuff. But they were trying, but he was trying to keep the story of Prometheus, but it just didn't quite work. Now you got this. Apparently, he got some good notes from Ridley Scott, and Ridley Scott actually liked it. Same with James Cameron. Apparently, he got some notes and some praise from James Cameron. But then again, James Cameron. He thought Terminator Dark Fate and Terminator Genesis was fucking awesome. I mean, that's just, they're playing the game. You got to play the game of like, hey, we want this movie to sell and people to enjoy it. So you can't really take that at face value. You really cannot. But yeah, with this trailer right here, I tell you, the Furiosa trailer. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You've come too far. Come too far. I love that little, yeah. This thing is just intense. The color palettes, the color palettes. That's what George Miller is doing here. She's from a place of abundance. You hear that song? Dan and 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 and. 
I was like, wait a minute, how do I know that score? That score sounds familiar. Yes. Oh yeah. I was like, what? I was like, how do I, I recognize that? That dan -an -an -an, and then I went, oh wait, Nirvana Unplugged, The Man Who Sold the World, which is a cover of a David Bowie song. Awesome. Good on you guys for doing that. So I don't know if that was uh, Junkie XL that did something like that. Maybe. I don't know. Could have been him. But yeah, that trailer looked pretty awesome. Pretty damn awesome. Can I, I mean, we're getting a Mad Max type of movie this this year. I mean, come on. You know, Dune Part 2, you know, Rebel Moon Part 2, you know, and then, of course, we're getting, like, you know, another Mad Max movie and all the other. I mean, it's, 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 this is a good year for movies, you know? I'm just saying. But not this, not this one. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I mean, we talked about this a little bit. Ah, a flying fucking spider. Why are you going to do this to me? But yeah, we got the uh, Herald and the Purple Crown. And then they do this, and there he is in a onesie. What is happening? Uh, he's drawing stuff. I mean, I don't know. I, oh, that is terrifying. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a movie I'm just not gonna not gonna see. And like I said, and like I said on Monday, I'm like I think Levi's being a typecast because he's essentially just playing Shazam right here. He essentially is. He he really is. This trailer right here. Did you guys see this? Okay, so this is something that maybe wasn't out there like too much, but I thought, okay, this is pretty crazy. This is pretty crazy right here because we have. The first trailer for, what's it called again? In a Violent Nature, okay? So this movie, apparently, this is a horror movie. Sundance, of course, they have to put all that right there. And it shows like the horror movie Jason, kind of like Michael Myers type of, a little supernatural maybe of a, of a killer. And the entire movie is from his perspective. Very interesting. I have C, you know, I have C and Shudder, who knows? But it's the entire movie is about, is from his perspective. So I'm like, what intrigues me, it goes, okay, so how do you keep the audience engaged? And how do you keep it like, okay, keep it going when it's just from his perspective of just walking, just, you know, that's what I'm kind of wondering. I'm like, how do you do that? And I'm like, all right, but that's something different. It's fresh. It's it's new okay fine i like that i like that so i was like okay i'm intrigued by that movie as as well so that was another trailer that came out and then there was this one because my god anytime a star wars trailer comes out everybody loses their shit and there's always a discourse and everything like that but yes the alkalite trailer that came out uh where is it where is it sorry didn't have it up. <laughs> All right, there it is. Jesus. So obviously we got this. Ooh. So this trailer is interesting. When it comes to this, I was like curious about it. Really thought the poster looked cool. I thought the poster for for the for for this series looked pretty cool. So then. And then hearing what the story is going to be about, obviously it's going to be mainly about the Jedi and people killing the Jedi. And I'm like, cool. This all sounds great. Watching this trailer, I was kind of like your eyes. underwhelmed. I will say I was a little underwhelmed. Your eyes. Even though it has a dude from Squid Game, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Uh, there's actually a meme that's out there because you know how you just said close your eyes? There's literally a creature in there that cannot close their eyes <laughs> it was just kind of a funny thing uh i saw a meme i don't know but anyways so the tone of this like some of the shots look like okay what uh, is it just something that's at it you know they, they shoot this on disneyland yeah it was just kind of funny because there was a meme out there they were like close your eyes and everybody has their eyes closed and they can't this creature right here doesn't have eyelids <laughs> it's like 
I, it was funny. I just thought that was funny. But I'm still intrigued. And, you know, of course, we have her. What's her name? Ah, somebody tell me. Carrie Ann Moss. Carrie Ann Moss. Um, you know, obviously, I've had a crush on her since the goddamn Matrix. So I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot that. You know, she's also in it. Carrie Ann Moss. But, uh, you know, I mean, there's things that are intriguing here. Like, I'm all about the Jedi. I'm all about the Jedi. And, okay, so we got some fight scenes, and we got some force usage right here. I'm like, okay, so there's some cool, that's a cool shot. We got some, you know, things in here that I'm like, okay. But it was a little underwhelming. I'm not going to lie. There was, like, an underwhelming feeling about this where like it just didn't feel it felt like oh, maybe this could have been better i don't know but it's like they're taking it seriously but not i don't know it's a weird thing there's something weird about this trailer but this last shot right here whoa buddy whoa buddy this last shot right here whoa buddy this looks pretty cool i mean come on whoa all right Okay, last shot, you know, that, that, I mean, as much as I was kind of like, all right, okay, well, whatever, but that last shot, all right, that actually, that, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I did, I, I did like that last shot. So I'm like, all right, and I'm, I mean, my favorite thing about the Star Wars universe is the Jedi. So I'm like, all right, let's, yeah, let's lean into that. And hopefully it ends up being good. But yeah, I will say that the trailer was slightly underwhelming, slightly underwhelming. We'll see, though. Anyways, okay. Oop. Oh, man, come on. Ah. All right, sorry. Not that. All right, those aren't working. Put those back. All right, let's get to the questions. How are you guys feeling about the, uh, the Star Wars trailer, huh? Very cool. Yeah, Dave saw the main character was a woman and rolled his eyes. Yes, that's what it was. No, nah, I don't care. I mean, I'm I'm all about, uh, you know, I'm all about that. I don't mind. Just make it make sense. It does look like it was filmed. That, yeah, I know. Right, Axel? I mean, it kind of, there's like, um, oh, yeah, it also has, uh, what's her name, played X-23. Um, yeah, it's just like, it's like some shots look good, but some shots just look like it was like, all right, like, are we walking into, like, a scene in a theme park? I don't know. It was just, yeah, it was just interesting. It was just interesting, but like I said, that, that last, that last, uh, that last shot was pretty damn good, though. What the hell is going on with, oh, crap. Did I just move my thing? I totally did. Yeah, see, I'm mess, my freaking mouse has been messing up, and now my, my, uh, <laughs> Now I have to fix my little shot right here. Ah, uh, not that, not that. Ah, uh, where is it? Where? Oh, man. This thing's, the overlay just got messed up. Nope, that's not it. That's the wrong overlay. Yeah, my little thing got messed up because my mouse has been, you know, technical difficulties. I tell you what, guys. I tell you what. I don't know why. Why won't you let me click on it? Hold on. There we go. Move it over. Up, up, ah. Back over. Up. Go up, up. There we go. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I gotta, get, I gotta get a new mouse. I actually have a new mouse. I just gotta. I'm gonna hook it up. So. All right. You want to see me move my thing? Move my thing. All right, let's see. What are you guys saying over on Twitter? Not that. Now I got that song in my head. All right, what are we doing here? Let's see. We got Axel right here. Dave, I've done some more art for Justice League Immortal. Plus, I've finally finished filming Red Robin. Red Robin, yum. Cool. So editing is all I have to do. There you go. I'll edit the shit out of that. That's a cool shot right there. I really like that. I remember you posted that earlier, and I was like, that's a good shot. That's a good That's a good image right there. It's also a good image, of course, of Kid Flash. And then, uh, you know, yeesh, what's going on right here between Soups and Wonder Woman, huh? And then John Stewart, Green Lantern. Good job, man. Very good job. Good job. 
Miss Jackson, question. Do you think Beetlejuice 2 will be a big hit because Burton said he used real effects? I think that might help. I honestly think that actually might help. And I think it might be a big hit. I think I think it has definitely, it definitely might be a good, it might be a big hit. Let's hope it is. Dave, I just got, uh, oh, Devon Wooter. Dave, I just got a heart attack for watching the Furiosa trailer too. So amazing. Yeah, it was pretty good. The song at the end trailer gives me goosebumps, man. Dave, just imagine George Miller directed Justice League for James Gunn. The action will be, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> wouldn't that be insane too if like somehow it brought back... George Miller to do, like, some kind of superhero movie. I don't know. George Miller's very much up there in age, so... I don't know if, like, he'll end up, like, doing something like that. But who knows? You just never know. Darkness on the Wind, Dave. Question one. Do you see this potential Justice League dark film coming, if not in the first chapter, then likely the next one? Yeah, I would say the next one. I mean, technically, in the first chapter, you got Swamp Thing coming out, and he is a part of that world that team so technically we're already getting something in chapter one can you see reeves possibly going with penguin as the main villain of bat the batman part two since yeah that's a good you know what that's pretty i like that it probably is going to be the case the penguin you know he was just kind of a side character but i think yeah maybe he well i think he will be i don't think he'll be the main villain there'll probably be somebody else but He'll be like a bigger part. Question three, should Lucasfilm fully dive, deep dive into the High Republic era after, right after the events of Alkalite once they finish their Mondoverse and if episode 10 gets axed? Quite, eh, I mean, I think they're kind of like leaning that direction. Uh, question two, if the Batman part two and Brave and the Bold release in the same year, which one would win? That is a good question. Jeez, how many questions do you have? Did, do you see an alien... Romulus saving the alien franchise if successful after what covenant yeah I mean it could just seems like uh when it comes to certain things I don't know people are kind of just I don't know there needs to be more original stuff and it seems like we're getting a lot of just you know nostalgic stuff lately but you know nostalgia is good with original stuff mr nobody i like the dark magical characters from dc and dead man is a pretty trippy character yeah my fave underappreciated character is metamorpho so i'm happy how about you i don't know that what that what that means dave uh what b or c level character that hasn't been used before would you like to see as a hero or villain uh intriguing intriguing yeah maybe related to trigon yeah i don't know that is a good question though like what and i, I think i've answered that before i mean i think the question would be pretty cool to see in a live action movie that can really noir the shit out of it and just to have the no face character i mean come on i think that would be pretty sweet so uh, i think the question would be something that i'd actually want to see like first like or you know when it comes to like these b or c list characters you know would be pretty sweet why is that not on there you go that's on now Del Toro? I mean, hey, if they could bring back Del Toro, so. Practical effects will stay true. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, there you go. All right, guys. James Wan for JLD. I think James Wan is done with the whole superhero stuff for right now. Yeah, I think he's kind of done with that. After what he went through with Aquaman, I think he's done. I think he's definitely done. All right. That's it, guys, for the stream, and uh, hopefully you guys uh, had fun. Like I said, members only, uh, members only stream right after this, so all you members out there, you will uh, get that on your feed. And if you want to like do a little more in intimate talking, we'll have some conversations. I don't really have too much tea, but uh, you know, maybe just a little bit or something like that. But uh, yeah, so I'll see you members in a little bit. Look for that on your feed. Everybody else, I'll see you guys either tomorrow for DC Fanimated. Ooh. Ooh, actually, I don't know if I'm... Gonna, oh, man. Yeah, we're seeing the later show. Might have to push it. Just thought about that right now. I'll talk to the coast. There might not be a DC fan animated because, yeah, if I'm going to see Ghostbusters later, yeah, there's, I'm not going to make that. So, might not be a DC fan animated. We might have to push that to uh, the following week. So, yeah, I didn't even think about that because, yeah, oof, the time. Anyways, 
figure that out. But I'll see you guys all obviously on the vodka stream and everything. All right, guys. Love you. Follow me on all the sock meds and everything. Talk to you later. Members in a little bit.